columns law in one's right uh, we know that f is equals to k q1 q2 divided by r squared so from this equation here we can see that uh, the electrostatic force that one point charge will exert on another will be directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square distance between them so when you're in the exam and you don't remember the formula fully well you just write down the equation and it becomes fully clear right uh, the electrostatic force that one point charge will exert on another will be directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square distance between them obviously uh, when you substitute the charges you don't put the size right uh, you just put the magnitude and uh, now we can do 9.2 9.2 is saying let's draw a vector diagram of the forces acting on sphere a indicate at least one angle so let's look at sphere a right so sphere a uh, is hanging from a string of uh, negligible mass right and then it's interacting with sphere b so our sphere a here is positive right here's the charge and then sphere b is negative Yes, the charge, right? Minus 8 times 10 to the minus 9 columns. So how does a positive charge interact with a negative charge? Uh, they attract each other, right? So sphere B will be pulling sphere A to the left. And then sphere A will be pulling sphere B uh, to the right. So if we draw in a vector diagram of the forces acting on sphere A, uh, then we should have a vector that shows uh, the electrostatic force that sphere B exerts on sphere A, right? And then apart from that, there's a gravitational force acting on sphere A, right? So we should have another vector pointing downwards, uh, which we can name weight or Fg, right? And then last but not least, we have the tension force from the string acting at an angle, right? So the tension force is stopping sphere a from falling down because of gravity and then it's stopping sphere a from moving to the left right so this tension should be should look like this right and then there we have our tension force and then they say we should include at least one angle so you can just include the angle that is already there which is 20 degrees or you can put an angle here which is 70 degrees right and then now we have a vector diagram for sphere a and we can go ahead and do 9.3 so 9.3 says that uh, let's calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force that sphere b exerts on sphere a right so again we're seeing that uh, the electrostatic force is equals to k uh, q1 q2 divided by r squared right so we have the charges of q1 let's say q1 is uh, sphere a right so we know the charge of sphere a we know the charge of the second sphere charge b right and then we know k that's a constant right and then now let's look for r squared the distance between them is given as three centimeters so we're gonna say that uh, r is equal to three centimeters uh, divided by a hundred uh, we converting it to meters right uh, from centimeters to meters you divide by 100 so now we can say that the electrostatic force will be equals to so what is k we know fully well that k is 9 times 10 to the power 9 and then the charge on q1 right we are only interested on the magnitude we don't put the sign right? uh, so we're gonna have 7 times 10 to the minus 9 and then q2 which is sphere b we're going to have 8 times 10 to the minus 9 we only put uh, the magnitude and not uh, the charge divided by r squared right uh, r we see that is 3 centimeters you convert it to meters by dividing by a hundred and then you square if you punch that uh, in your calculator uh, you should get 5.6 times 10 uh, to the what to the minus 4 
uh, newtons and that's the magnitude of the electrostatic force that sphere b exerts on a it's also the magnitude of the electrostatic force that a exerts on b right uh, now let's do 9.4 9.4 says let's calculate the magnitude of the tension force in the string right so there's two ways of approaching this question uh, the magnitude of the tension force on the string right so again our vector diagram for a right uh, we had fe the electrostatic and then we had fg and then we had the tension at an angle right uh, we have already deduced that uh, this angle here is 70 degrees why are we saying it's 70 degrees the angle here is 20 the angle here is 90 so that angle here should be 70 degrees so because uh, the sphere a is not going up or down right uh, the y component of the tension force should be balancing with fg right but then still at the same time the sphere a is not going to the left or to the right so the x component of the tension force right should be balancing with the electrostatic force so if you equate these two you should be able to get the tension force and then if you also equate these two you should be able to get the tension force because they are balanced right uh, but then let's do both let's do both so let's equate uh, the y component of the tension and fg right so we have ty uh, being equals to fg so what is the tension force we don't know what the tension force is but then how do we find the y component we multiply by sine of theta we know that theta is 70 degrees right so we're gonna have multiply by sine of 70 degrees being equals to fg fg is the mass multiplied by uh, the gravity right if you look at our equation here we're told that the sphere has a mass of 0 0.2 grams right so we're going to have 0 0.2 divided by a thousand why are we dividing by a thousand the si unit of mass in physics is kgs right so we have to divide grams to thousand to convert to kg multiply by 9.8 so now we can say that the tension is equals to 0 0.2 divided by a thousand multiplied by 9.8 and then everything divided by sine of 70 degrees uh, we're just simply dividing both sides by 70 degrees right and the tension uh, should be equals to 2.08 five seven uh times ten to the minus three newtons right so we've used the first way to calculate it uh let's use the other so the other way we see that uh, the x component of the tension will be equals to uh, the electrostatic force right so now we're gonna have the tension multiplied by if you want to find the x component you take cos of the angle so we have cos 70 being equals to uh, the electrostatic force uh, we calculated the electrostatic force in 7 in 9.3 right uh, we know fully well that it is uh, 7.13 times 10 to the minus 4 right so now we divide in both sides by cos of 70 so the tension is going to be 7 point one three times ten to the minus four divided by cos of seventy and that is equals to two point uh zero eight uh four seven times ten to the minus three newtons